calm me down in a second here. Hey, what's up, guys? Keys on McNeil today. We're going to talk about movers and shakers. So, as part of my channel, I have started a mover and shakers um, area where I want to just focus on entrepreneurs. You're talking about people that are kind of just under the radar making it happen. They have multiple streams of income. They have, you know, they're working W two jobs in addition to having their side hustles. You know, they're also doing nonprofit industry business. They're doing a lot of different things, which is why they call we call them a mover and shaker. Okay, today I got one of my good friends on the on the line, Mr. Horace Ward. Horace, uh, I've known Horace since wow, nineteen, I'm gonna say nineteen ninety one. You know, we actually went to high school together. He's a couple years behind me, but a uh, good, good brother. And um, when I think about moving and shaking, he's someone that jumps to the top, 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 top of the list. I mean, from lifestyle, he's doing light, he's on the lifestyle company. He's he's uh, doing cyber. He's doing a lot of good things. So we're gonna jump into the uh, interview with Mr. Ward right now. Horace, how's it going, brother? Good, brother. How you, man? Oh man, I can't complain, man. I can't complain. It's uh. New year, new focus, new grind. You know, we just maintain it, man. Maintain it, man. So, the reason why I wanted to have you on today, man, it's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you for for uh, taking time out your busy schedule, man. You're looking sharp uh, you. to do this for me, man. Like, I want to tell you, I want to show you guys something. Like, we are doing a virtual interview, right? You know, and this is what I I talk about on my career side when we're talking about preparing for career uh, for interviews. Like, horse guy on a suit jacket right now, like. He could have done this in a t-shirt or whatever whatever but perception is reality man so he's showing you this is what this is how he's getting down you know this is how you're getting down so horace tell me what you what do you have going on right now man what's what's going on in your neck of the woods brother oh man uh definitely a, a lot of things in the iron um you know i i, I, I um ended 2020 on a strong note went into 2021 um, you know, W two like you said, got a couple of uh, remote uh, project management positions working on. And one of my major projects personally is my my uh, my university I'm setting up is a uh, Red Diamond University. Red Diamond Red University. Red. Okay, that I, that sounds interesting. Talk to me about that. What's what's that about? Red, Red, Red University is uh, so one of the things I found. You know, observing the whole pandemic and observing. Uh, how entrepreneurs um, were, were either falling or or not being successful was, you know, they didn't have the foundation set up. So after listening to a couple of people talking to you, just getting some information, I said, hey, why don't I set up? Because a lot of people try to pick my brand because I'm an entrepreneur. Also, I got an education background and then, you know, I got the corporate, they try to pick my brain, but no, everybody can't afford my hourly rate. So, you know, and I like to get people personal coaching. So instead of me have to bill you the hourly rate, I say, hey, just go to my university. You know what I'm saying? And you can do some modules. Now, if you want to take it farther, we could have a one-on-one -on -one session. If you want to have that one-on-one -on -one customized type of um, relationship, but it's more easier just have a conversation with somebody like, oh, Horace, how did I do such and such? I point them to this link, sign up, you know, go into the link, pay the pay the price, and learn that process. So let me ask you: So is this for someone who wants to start their own business and just kind of doesn't know where to start, or could it also be for someone who actually has a business, but maybe they need need some type of mentoring, or you know, what's your target right now? What What are you trying to target? That's a great question, Pizan. So when my team and I sat down, and really strategized on how this was going to how, how we was going to push this out and our launch date is looking like uh around march time frame uh, first quarter in the first quarter we were thinking about three tiers of individuals the person who's never started a business right the person who has a business but they kind of like and that's why i saw a lot of people in the COVID situation they were just i got a business but they fluttering right you know they in deep water they don't have a life jacket with your life jacket and going here you know how do i re? how do i restart my business how do i do customer outreach we're gonna have modules with that then we got the person who has a business they doing good they just want extra education you know what i'm saying they just want to do extra practice 
are, are, are you going to have any any um any tips like or leads on maybe because you know as an entrepreneur or, or or business owner there is a difference i talk to people about there is a difference between being an entrepreneur and a business owner but are you going to have um like leads for like financing or how to obtain financing because that's the that's the Achilles heel, oh, man. For a lot of businesses, some, they they just lack funding. Uh, <laughs> you give away some of my secrets. Uh, yes, we're gonna teach uh, business funding. Oh. Uh, we're gonna teach. Uh, we're gonna show you how to how to not chase the bag but become the bank. Ah, uh, become the bank. I talk about that all the time on this channel. Oh, man, I don't, I don't believe we like we have a session there where we actually partner with you on how to use insurance. To keep your business up and running you know a lot of people don't know that insurance has and we you know we're going to talk about this you can build a cash value and you can dip into that and yeah absolutely let's dip that's cool I, I, there yeah. you go you know so there's a lot of a lot of things we're going to talk about in this the, so the basic modules are just going to start out right now to go back to what you is going to be for the foundational person you know the okay. basic module business one-on-one okay you know, so we're going to talk to those people but as we evolve we want to start really gearing towards a, a, a diverse those other two tiers of individuals. Okay, I like I like that, man. I, how how did you? What made you? Man, I know, man, you always got something going on, man. That's that's why I'm I'm always attracted to people who, you know, they say your network is your net worth, or you know those sayings that say you know if you if you got ten broke friends, and you know you're around, and you're probably gonna be the eleventh broke friend. So you know you know that's one reason why we've always uh, chopped it up, gotten along, and you know we're we're big dreamers. You know what I'm saying, and that's something I've always liked about you. Uh, I know you look at me somewhat as of a mentor, but man, brother, I I, I learned yeah. things from you as well, man. But how how did you decide that? You know what? I'm gonna start a university where people can learn how to not just start a business, but how to have their business flow better. What what made you? How'd you come up with that? Well, touch on one thing. You talk about dreaming. Dreaming is free. There ain't no charge to dream. Absolutely. Some people just stop dreaming. It's sad, you know. And I know um, uh, Les Brown says, he said, if you want to find the most wealth in the world, go to the graveyard. Because a lot of people went down with dreams and aspirations. Dreaming is free, but there's also action as well. Sure. So we talk about this all the time. One of my mentors who I've never met, but he's a fraternity brother of mine, Reginald Lewis. Oh. You know, oh. and, uh, you know, the book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun, was very instrumental in my life. So just taking that focus and then, um, you know, I worked in banking for a while, got my, you know, got my undergrad in banking and finance, got my, um, you know, got my grad MBA in management and then did some legal work, about to go back and finish up that, that work as well. So I, I knew I have a wealth of knowledge to give to individuals, but I can't, me personally, I wish there was a million of me and then I wish I could give people my time, but I'm busy. I'm, I'm, I'm really busy. You're moving. I you get know? it. I get it. But I want to help individuals, uh, you know, out with this, you know what I'm saying? So sure. you got the, you, 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 you have the school. Now there's a philanthropy part on this as well, because there are certain people we're going to give this to for free, like high school, like we, we, I'm going to say junior high school, high school students, there's going to be modules for them to learn, you know, certain things you never get taught in school, right? Then we're going to look at people transitioning back into the, to the work world who was gone away for a while. For whatever reason you was gone away for, we want to, you, you could do that. You could get into our university and so forth. Then I'm a veteran. I want to get back to the veterans also. So gotcha. I like, I like the philanthropic side of it. That, I think that's important. I think that's important. It's important. Yep. So, so all, you know, um, yep. You wrote a book, man, about, I guess, about a year oh, ago. Man. Um, man. Had it, you had it, you self-published, you know, uh, The Entrepreneurial Way. Sure. Shout out to you for that. And uh, yeah, you wrote that book. I had a chance to read the book, man. You know, I, very impressive, you know, very impressive. I, I like how you touched on, you know, just, you know, you kind of show how you can get caught up. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me let me ask you this. Um, when you wrote that book, first of all, I want you to talk about the book because, guys, this book, this book, we, I'm not even gonna sit here and say support black businesses and all that stuff. This is actually a good book. I'll drop a link. I'll drop a link uh, below um, so you can pick this book up. Uh, Amazon's moving it. Uh, I got a call from 
and I didn't even tell you this, man. I got a good buddy that went to school with me up in Michigan, and I referred the book to him about two weeks ago, and he's already referred it to other people. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, guys, it, pick this nice. book up, man, and you see that nice. residual income coming in, guys? He wrote a book selling it on Amazon. He wrote the book one time. What's Pop up? a link on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon's going to take a cut. So what? But he's already done man. the work, and he... What, what made you write that book, Horace? Talk to me, man. So it's, it's a couple of tears to it, right? So once again, my mom always, like my mom always pushed reading. Even when I didn't want to read, she always give me a book or something to read. And sometimes I'd be like, I right. but then I used to lifeguard, so I'd sit around the pool, I'd start reading. So one day I was on the train moving around D.C., and I just saw the movie Boiler Room. And I like that because you know, remember I told you know going to finance. I like that. Yeah, that was one of, that's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorites. Oh, Boiler Room. Shout out. I that's, that's, that. I like, that's one of my Boiler favorite movies. Wall Street go hand in hand, right? But I was thinking like there ain't nothing out here. You know, we always say like New Jack City and stuff like that. You know, always just glamorized. Well, you know, you know how they want to play us, man. They want they yeah, want they us to look like drug dealers. If we, we ain't if we ain't playing sports, you know, we got to be a drug dealer. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, uh, I was like, look, man, let me put together something. I just started writing. You know what I'm saying? I just started putting some ideas coming up in my, my mind, you know, and I, that's my gift. I could write, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could write, put words together, and I just started writing. And just to just to um, give you a backstory, that book is a three parts. It's part of a series. Oh, so you got some it's more called, coming. It's called Crack the Code series. You know what I'm saying? I like it. So that, that book is take a leap. The next one's gonna be called a mentor, then the last one is crack the code. Let me let right? me ask you real quick, Horace, because I you have a few uh you know for subscribers and people just watching this. There there are people out here right now that you know have ideas and they have a story in their head like you did, and um they just don't have the vehicle or the avenue. You know, was it really hard for you to self publish your book without giving away all your details? Was it was it a hard process? All right. I mean, just start writing. Get a notepad, get something, and just start writing. You know, and there's really no excuse now because all the information is on the internet. You can go, matter of fact, get your joint binding, get it edited, and just push it out. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember, I think it was uh, Grant Grant Cadone. He said he said his first book had so many grammatical errors, but he if he would have kept trying to revise, 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 he would never put it out. So he just put it out. It became a New York Times number one bestseller. You know, still so selling today. Still, still selling today. And so that's another thing. I want to have tangible assets for my generations to come, like books, schools. So if my grandkids say, and they nap because we're working on this, but they ever say, damn, we down and out. Right. Let's go sell some of granddad's books. Let's republish another version. Money, you know, money in the bank. Money in the bank. So, Horace, you yeah, touched on you touched on multiple streams of income a little earlier. So, I'm gonna run a couple down that 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 Horace yeah. has. He has a book that's consistently selling on Amazon. Hit the link below. Check. Look, get the book. I'm not telling you to support Horace. It's a really good book. If it was trash, I would say, Horace, I'm not putting the link on this thing. It's a really good book, and he knows I'm I'm I'm, I'm factual. He also is. He also has a W two gig where he's a consultant. W two wise, he also consults as well. You know, those are three income streams right there. That's and and mm -hmm. just starting Red Diamond University. That's going to be a fourth income stream. Okay, and I know you also dabble in real estate a little bit as well. Is that right? Man, so yeah, um, got a few properties. Uh, I got my property up in um, in um, in Columbia. Maryland. Okay. Mom has a property in Atlanta, then my dad has a property in New York. We get those on. But then I also I also learned a new way of real estate called uh, rental arbitrage. Ah, yes, yes, so, yes, yes. Touch, touch on that a little bit for those who aren't familiar with uh, rental arbitrage. The game is to be sold, man. Not to see, you, hear, you see, you hear this. He has the information. <laughs> And, and he has information. Now, you could go on and Google it and try to find it. You know, and that's fine. You probably can. But you have a subject matter expert right here Man, who has information. Arbitrage. And he can charge you for that information. Ain't that right, Horace? Red Diamond University, we're going to talk about, 
you know, setting up a business. If you're a corporation, see, and I'm, I'm gonna break this down real quick, real quick. I'm gonna go through this, right? Because this is so important. This is in. Hopefully, I'm not infringing on no copyrights, and if so, we could we could delete it. But Cash Flow Quadrant. That's an amazing book. And it talks about the different quadrants, right? It talks about the the individual person. It talks about the self-employed. Those people that get taxed the most and get pain, painfully uh, uh, within the workforce get dealt with the, the worst, right? And the taxes are painful. But on the other side of that is the investor and the business owner. Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Shout out to Robert Kiyosaki. He touches on those quadrants. Okay. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So if you move over to the investor and the business owner yep. side, life gets taxes are not a penalty, but it's an incentive. Yep, you got that right. So right now this apartment I'm living in, right, is ran through my business. So it's a, it's a business expense. Technically, I'm sitting here in this one room. I got a couple of computers going on. I got a TV. I'm sitting here and watch, keep abreast of everything so I could make sure my clients know everything. You know what I'm saying? I use this as an office space. So this is a business space. This is within the tax right. code. So air, air, um, rental arbitrage allows you to go and acquire apartments through a corporation. And it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, I'm not going to get too in the weeds, but then you can re-rent those out. Kind of, kind of, kind of like some through. similar to like an Airbnb, I'm assuming something like that, but a little more, you got a little more skin in the game. But a lot of people are, are, are transitioning off of Airbnb because Airbnb has a lot of little, uh, you know, little, little, um, I don't want to say fees, but regulations and limitations on things. But right. Yeah, they have their, they have their like, standards that you have to have. And yeah, yeah, they got some roadblocks. And the biggest thing is, and the, and the other thing with Airbnb is you kind of, when a person goes on there, you could, you could, you could, uh, you could vet them. But still, people come in and make trash or drink. We looking for more high end people. That's why we look at higher end apartments. We looking at the, we looking at the CEO. So you doing like corporate at, uh, rentals and things like that as well? I'm assuming, right? Gotcha. Rentals, yeah. All right. So I, I forget. I left out one income stream. Also, the lifestyle. You see how sharp this brother's dressed today. So and and as far as I, as far as I can remember, you've been on the lifestyle. You've been doing the lifestyle consulting, man. I'm a, I'm I'm probably going back at least six years and maybe longer. But as far as me knowing about it, I'm going to say the last five to six years where you can basically be that concierge. And so what Horace does, he's that concierge. So if you want to go to DR, uh, Mexico, Florida, whatever, he has contacts in those areas. If you want to, this is all VIP. So this isn't just your hit a travel agent, go travel. This is for those individuals who really want to play hard, you know, so you want to have the Bentley there waiting for you. If you want to go down there and fly private, he's got the contact for that as well. You know, you want to stay in a villa, you want to stay in the top floor at the W. This is your guy, you know, so in, and then custom suits. I know I personally bought a, some custom shoes from you. They got my name in them and everything, you know, so, you know, and, and is that, it, it sounds to me, you know, because I touch on this all the time that you took something like lifestyle and, and, and being fly. You took something you were passionate about. You were passionate about this and just made it a business. Is that, isn't that what you did? Man, it's called an MOG lifestyle company. MOG actually stands, uh, stands for a lot of people never know, but it stands for members only group. You know, it's only select people that's going to be part of this group that, you know, almost invitation only. But you get that. Like you say, you want to go to DR. I got people on the ground there right now that you will call. They come pick you up in the airport, you know, so forth, in other countries, you know. So it's just not there. I'm part of a, you know, a, a travel agency consortium of people that know they were around. You can pick up the phone, get private jets, uh, you know, uh, private cars and so nice. forth. Because there's a certain type of person nice. who wants that. Chefs, we got, as a matter of fact, I just talked to one of the chefs last night. They do um, five star cooking and so forth. So, you know, there's people that pay for that service that will pay premium dollar. Don't ask. Don't you know? They want custom suits. You got people that fly around. They don't even carry carry a bag when they get there. They want everything. So you're you're catering to a niche of well, we won't necessarily yeah. say high net worth, but individuals who who are ready to play can afford to play. So horse has four to five residual income streams, right? You know now. You know, they may not, all of them may not just constantly come in every month, every month, every month, but he has income coming in in various quadrants. One quadrant may slow up. He's got money over here. 
You know what I mean? So I, I, I can't, you know, I know I talk about it all the time, but now you guys are seeing for yourself. Here's, you know, someone else, you know, same type of motion. So, Horace, let's jump into you talked about insurance. Um, now, you're not talking about just insurance where you just die and someone gets a check. You know what? You know, your your insurance, you talked about you have the uh, cash value life insurance uh, that actually builds. And you're talking about your own bank. Talk to me about that a little bit. That's exciting. So, yeah. So, I mean, and, and you and I have some long conversations around, you know, building my own bank. I've heard the concept before, but also being in banking, it was kind of it was easier for me to digest what you were talking about. Right. So think about it. If you understand how the banking system works, they really using your money to loan back to you. Say, so, say, say that again. Well, Explain that for me. What you mean by that? Because you're a banker, so we want to make it so the individuals who they're not as savvy with banking. You, you are a banker, so when you say the bank is taking your money, you mean the money that they get deposited into that bank account could be their paycheck, money that is sitting there. The bank is using that money. Let's just keep it simple terms. I'm not going to get into fractional lending and all that. I'm just going to keep it real simple. You go put your money in a bank account, uh, a checking account, basic sure. checking account. I don't know what a checking account can give you right now. It's zero. Yeah, basically. it's about, it's just under 1%. You know? It's about 0 0.009. And then yeah. sometimes you get to a point where they charge you to keep your money in the bank. Think about that. They charge you to hold your money. But think about this. So when you go get a loan for a car, depending on your credit, you know, let's say you have pretty solid credit. They may give you like a two, three percent. They just made they 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 almost they doubled the money three times over based off of just the money that you put in there. So they're using your money right. to lend out to other people. Your money to get right back to you. So when we talk about it, you say, Hey man, why don't you just put your money in something that for one, inevitably you're gonna pass away. So there is a of course, it's insurance. Also, also use the money that you're putting in. It's going to build a cash value. So if you ever need to go get a loan or anything, you just get your money that you that you put in and you use it for yourself versus having to go to the bank. Now, banks have usages, you know, pay sure. bills and stuff like that. I'm not banking on building wealth, put my money in a bank in a CD or a savings account. That's not going to happen. You know, it's utilizing these systems that's in place you know, to create that wealth. Generation. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to get ready to wrap up a little bit here because I know I know you're a super busy horse, but I want to touch on something horse just mentioned about he's basically taking his banking function and he's bringing that back in. So he's he's taking over his own banking function. Yes, he needs the banks to take care of his direct deposits, but that money's not sitting in his bank account anymore. He's moving it to his own family bank now, his bank. So. Horace actually is one of my clients as well, where he started his bank. Um, wow, he has, not to get into your business, let's just say he has more than one bank set up, okay? And it creates cash every month for him, actually every day. But he gets his interest paid out every month. And I guarantee you it's definitely more than 0.009%. He sees the cash. He's able to go invest it. I'm sure he probably used some of his cash to start Red Diamond. Maybe, maybe not. But um, yeah. Guys, I cannot stress the importance of setting up your own family bank. You know, I'm not just saying that because I do that. Go do it with someone else. I'm just telling you, set something up today. I'll leave a link below to kind of so you can learn more about uh, getting out of debt in 10 years or less uh, as well. Set up a call with myself, uh, Mr. Ward. I'm going to have uh, his link to Red Diamond University. If you have ever even considered or thought about starting a business or you want to do it, but you're kind of scared, don't know where to start. Red Diamond is going to be the, a great landing spot. I'm going to probably have a module on there. I may have a couple on there. Uh, one could, one's going to probably be about career advancement because some individuals want to advance in their career. Then I'm also going to talk about uh, setting up your private bank as well. So um, I'm going to be involved in it as well. So I can't, I can I strongly encourage you guys to check it out. Um, I'm going to drop a link to, to Mr. Ward's book as well. Again, Mover and Shaker. That's what we're going to have on these interview series, Movers and Shakers. Horace, I want you to wrap up with um, just uh, a thought. I want to, I want to, one, I want to know what's the last book you read, okay? And then I want you to also um, address that person 
who wants to start but they've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off what do you say to that person as well so i want to address two things what's the most recent book you've read or what you're reading right now and then how do you get someone over the hump who has thought about starting a business but they just something's just stopping them you know what i mean I, I got a couple of books in rotation, but the top one is Power of Knowledge. By Power of Knowledge. We, where, where can we cop that book? It's called, it's called Power, Power Knowledge. Knowledge. Power, Power of Knowledge. Knowledge. Right, I'm going to get that. Can we Power. get that on Amazon, I'm sure? All right, I'm going I'm to yes, drop sir. a link that, that as well, it's guys. Very, it, it's becoming very popular uh, in a lot of situations going on, but Dr. Claude, has, he's been out for a while. He's well known around, you know, in the, especially in the in the black okay. community. But that just teaches you about once again wealth building, um, building nation building, um, poweronomics, and it, it just it, it it has a different mind. It keeps your mindset different. It has you uh, thinking about ways non traditional, right? Because what they teach us is and I'm not I'm not knocking school, but school is there for a reason. To get you through and get you and let's be real we talk to someone who got a law degree in the nba so he's not he's he not one of those people that's saying forget school forget school he's not saying forget school because he's done school but he's just you know he's keeping it real as well right so but with that so for the person who is hesitating not to sound cliche uh do some planning do some research but don't get in, don't get caught into um, uh, analysis paralysis where you got to analyze everything and you got to question the point. You got to just, you got to, so and that's the name of the book, Take a Leap. You got to take a leap. You, go. Full you circle. can't just, you just can't just sit around and just be like, because you could, you could be doing right. that for 10 years and all opportunities gone and then you know you you right. like what happened is especially with technology things move so fast so do your analysis you know set a foundation red diamond university you know if you want to come in get some information be around some like-minded people but at the end of the day you got to do it, it, it ain't nothing around it you know and you can't That's avoid right. doing it. That's right. you know you can't avoid it i mean you can sit around and be Talk about it all day. Got to jump at some point, right? <laughs> Got to jump. Got to jump. Hey, guys, thank you, Mr. Horace Ward. <laughs> I appreciate your time, brother. Guys, if you like what you saw in this series today for this Moving and Shaker, let me know. I got some more interviews coming, man. We moving and shaking, baby. Um, please, do me a favor, huge favor right now. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. There's a like button. Hit that like button. Smash it, matter of fact. Hit it real hard for me. It really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. And then if you like what you saw today and you want to see more episodes like this, be notified. Hit the notification bell. But first, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys on the next episode. We're going to talk about career, financial hacks. And we're going to even dip and talk to some of these movers and shakers so you can see that people are really out here doing it. Until then, as always, run your race. Peace. Peace.